Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Monday morning edition of the show. It is March 29th, charging through this year, 2021. And uh, last chance qualifier this weekend, who impressed you the most? Man, Evan Henderson coming from behind at 65 kilos is crazy. And then Mitch McKee, seven straight matches on the backside to qualify at 65. That was that was wild. 86 kilos was loaded. So yep. seeing Gabe Dean and Nate Jackson come through was was impressive too. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be uh, fun to watch what happens this next weekend. Obviously, out in Fort Worth, we'll be there recovering it. Um, but let's get to our guest today. He's a 2021 133 pound NCAA champion, Roman Bravo Young from Penn State. How you doing today, Roman? Good. How you guys doing? Doing great, man. Doing great. Thanks for joining us. Um, and I kind of wanted to get from the start, right? Like your introduction to wrestling. How old were you? How did you, who introduced you to wrestling? How did you get involved? Yeah, so, you know, my dad wrestled in high school. He's from Apple Valley. And um, my grandpa was a wrestling coach. And I guess they met at a tournament or something. My grandpa told him to come down to Arizona and then uh, to wrestle for him at Sunnyside. And then that's obviously how my mom, he came, and that's how my mom and him met. But, yeah, my grandpa's been a coach at Sunnyside for a while, and uh, still to this day. And I've just been around it. My uncles wrestled. They were state champions at Sunnyside, so I kind of just followed their path. Nice. Um you know, sometimes pe people come from wrestling families. They do it just because they're supposed to. Um, you got introduced to it. What drew you in, um, aside from it just being a, a legacy thing? Yeah, you know, I really didn't start taking wrestling serious until probably about eighth grade. And uh, I got held back. So then that year that I got held back, I didn't do any school at all. So, like, my grandpa completely pulled me out, out of school and said, you're going to get held back. You're too small to go into high school. So... I literally just trained with him every day. Woke up, trained, and uh, that's all we did. And then I finally went to Fargo, and that's when I won my first Fargo, and it slowly just started progressing from there. But the, I pretty much didn't say because I played football too. But, yeah, I'd say that year that I got held back, I really started to take it more serious. Tell me more about that year you got that you did get held back and, and I guess, basically just training wrestling for a year. What was that like? Um how how intense was it or how technically focused was it or you know what 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 helped you take off that year you know it was uh it was weird like i i went to the otc and i wasn't even invited so i kind of just forced myself like i heard there was a camp going and my coach just kind of just took me and we just said we got there didn't even know if we were allowed there and um and we just started training alongside the u.s team and that's kind of how uh that happened i got really close to troy steiner and then i trained with like Helen and uh, Ellie Reagan a couple of times and so kind of just t taking chances, you know Sweet man. What what was your thought? You know Obviously, they did let you into the OTC was it was it ever a question once you got there and like knocked on the door or just showed up or, or whatever? Uh, we we kind of just got there we had went to practice and then I kind of I was wasn't doing too bad and then they just kind of just let me stay and then same thing they used to have a they had like a freestyle camp at ASU and same thing. We just showed up with the squad and we just kind of got in on it. We weren't we really weren't invited. I didn't really have a name yet, you know? Yeah, sure. Um, what was it like training with Helen? And I think you said Allie and whoever else. Yeah, you know, it's cool. I got, I'm really close with them and uh, I think I helped them and they obviously helped me a little bit, but uh, Helen's back. Uh, Helen's up at PSU now. So that's really cool. Nice. So um, man, it sounds like you're, you're just, you've always been willing to just, jump at the chance to take opportunities. Um, not a lot of people have those kinds of experiences. I think we were talking to Austin Gomez one, one time on here, and he said something like, maybe you guys wrestled or his dad watched you wrestle at, at cadet trials or something, and, he, and then he's just like, hey, why don't, we, why don't we just train together for a couple of weeks or for a month or whatever, and, and you just went out there and trained with him. What, what's that, what happened to that? To, tell me your side of that story, and then also what is it that just leads you to jump at these opportunities? Yeah, so I think it was yeah after cadet trials or something. Uh, he was like, "You want to come train?" And my grandpa was like, "You better go," because my grandpa's the one who pretty much paved the way for where I'm at now. So he's like, "You better go." So I just went from there, and uh, we went straight out there, and we trained every day. And uh, you know, his dad, his dad pushes us pretty hard, but you know that was fun. That was a definitely a life changing experience. He had us working out there, cutting uh, trees down, doing all that crazy stuff. But um. But, you know, you just got to take it, right? You got to take risks sometimes, and that's just how it is. And that's how I've always been. You see me, I'm out there training everywhere, building my network. And uh, I think that's what it's about because I only got a short window to um, to do this kind of stuff. You know, that's why I train out with, like, UFC fighters. I train everywhere. I really don't care. You know, I'm just I'm just cool with everyone. I don't have no hate. It's all, it's all just training and sharing knowledge. 
So, so back to the the time when you trained with Gomez. So you didn't even go home from the trials. You just went like you were like you just went straight to his house and and trained with him. Straight for like for like two months. We would wake up, go to dad's uh, cutting tree business, cut trees, uh, <laughs> dig roots out the ground, and then go wrestle. And then it was like it was just like wow, what am I doing? But it was fun. Man, that's crazy. Um, and man, this summer I got to be out there and 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 meet a couple people that that helped you know that were around as you were coming up and there's something special at sunny side but also uh man training with bobby and the, you know the, the the strength and conditioning training you guys got going on talk about the the network that that you grew up around and and just i don't know what's what what makes that area special it's it's in arizona is not a part of the country where a ton of wrestlers come out of but yeah that sunny side program is right and what what makes it happen that way yeah i think it's just uh I think it's just toughness, you know. Um, we don't really have much. We're not. We're. I don't know how to decide. We're uh, kind of poor, I'd say. You know, we're from the hood, the ghetto. It's not the best neighborhood out here. So I think. Um, I think that's just, just. We have a little. We don't really have the best resources, but we kind of make uh, make the best of what we have. Type thing. Like you kind of saw the neighborhood. It's not really the best, and uh, everyone's just. We're just tough out here, but not necessarily in uh, in the right way. We're more street tough. If that makes sense. When you grow up, uh, you know whether whether somebody grows up in that type of a neighborhood you're describing, or uh, a better or a worse, you really don't understand the difference until you kind of get outside and see other neighborhoods, right? When did you understand yeah. that it was kind of a, a poor place? And did wrestling seem like a way to help you? I don't know, if get out's the right word, but find success. No, wrestling is wrestling is the only reason why I'm not out there doing bad things, you know, it's just all my friends from high school are out there like selling drugs and stuff and none of them are really doing too much with their lives and that's just what it is right here, right? There's no one really that paves the way and for me, if it wasn't for Penn State, I have no clue what I would be doing. So I'm just lucky that my grandpa, like I said, kept me on the right path and I had a lot of people who kept me on the right path, but uh, it's easy to slip up around here, but I'm glad I found a way. And uh, yeah, you know, once I got out to Penn State at first, I didn't really like it, you know, it's just different. These people aren't my people and um, it's just not Tucson, Arizona, you know. People got a lot more money out there. They kind of, they kind of think they're good, too good for everyone, and like they really have no clue. If that makes sense. <clears throat> sure. Um, obviously, after eighth grade, you, you started having success, and, and you had a bunch of success in high school. And I'm sure you had a lot of options, right? You, you chose state, Penn State, obviously. Um, why did you choose Penn State, and where else did you look, and did you seriously consider anywhere else? Um, I mean, obviously ASU, um, Indiana, I was cool with Angel, but uh, it was honestly just PSU. I know I wanted to get out. My grandpa was like, if K.O. Sanderson's calling you, you better go there, right? You want to win some titles. You see the way they wrestle. And um, for me, if, for me, I'm just uh, – I'm a chill, laid, laid-back guy, and I think that's that's why I fit in so well. I'm not really with the ye- coaches, like, yelling crazy at other schools and doing all this. I just like to chill and do my own thing. But uh, I think – I think Kale and them have a lot of success because they let their guys be themselves, but they're going to help you in uh, any way you want. You said, you know, if, if it wasn't for wrestling, you'd be with these other guys you described, selling drugs, doing bad things, whatnot. When yeah. did you realize that, that maybe that you needed wrestling and that, man, there's a, there's a really bad path that's going to probably be easy to go down? Um... Maybe after like my first state title, um, my freshman year, I kind of, I kind of wasn't really, you know, I was like having, I was failing classes and stuff my freshman year, and then I won a state title. You know, I thought I was cool and all, just because like I was like uh, I was just undefeated, and uh, my grades weren't that good. And then I got a good reality check, and then that's when it, that's when I moved away from my mom, and I moved in one with one of my coaches, and I've lived with him since then. And he kind of took me under the wing. His name's Coach, Coach Sanchez. And uh, he just kept me in line since then, and uh, I'm very thankful for him for that. He always, every day, was like, "What are your grades? What are your grades?" And then I was just doing. Make, I had to get straight A's from my uh, sophomore year on to go to uh, to like, get to Penn State because I always told myself, like growing up, that I wasn't going to college. And then here I am now. You said you said I had a reality check. Can you can you share with us what yeah. that was? They just they just made me move from home, you know. I'm not imagine not living with your parents or what my mom or what you usually do, and they just made I'm just living with him and his wife, and then uh, they're watching everything I do. They're making sure I do my homework. So it's just kind of like it just it just had eyes with a lot of things. 
Uh, that that can't be an easy transition for probably a, I don't know, 15, 16 year old, something like that. What what was it tough at first, or maybe the whole time? I don't know. I mean, at first, but now it's cool. I look back at it, and I was I don't I don't regret anything. Like that's what that's what helped me a lot, and uh, I needed that. Yeah. What were those conversations like with your parents when you were making that decision to 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 go do that? Well, I never really had a, a father figure in my life. So it's kind of just my mom. Yeah, I've never really met my dad or talked to him before. But I'm just uh, you know, it is what it is. You gotta do what you gotta do, right? They said that they see potential in me, so you gotta trust them. And it is. I mean, I still saw her here and there on the weekends and stuff. But other than that, I just had to create a better, better environment for myself. Did you see the potential in yourself? Um... Before the coaches, you know, you said they saw potential in me. Did you know you had that potential or did, was it living and, and changing your situation and, and being kind of fostered into that environment when you maybe realized it? Yeah, I, I really didn't see any of my potential until like, like that I really have some potential, probably till like my senior year of high school, really. Like I was like, I'm, I was winning, I was doing good. But then again, I take a step back and like, it's just Arizona, if that makes sense. I'm not saying not to knock on Arizona, but sometimes a lot of people can get away with uh, good records and winning four state titles because Arizona's not the toughest. And then once I started winning like bigger tournaments, going to who's number one, I was like, all right, maybe I could uh, hang with the best in the nation because sometimes Arizona has a lot of good wrestlers, but they're only good in Arizona. But uh, I was doing uh, I was doing pretty decent on the national scene too, so I was like, all right, maybe I'm maybe I can go somewhere with this. Was there um, a, a match in particular or maybe a, an event in particular that helped you flip that switch and be like, like you said, man, maybe I can, maybe I do have this enough potential to do something really special? I think when I made the, the cadet world team for my first time, I tried like two and then I finally made the team and then I was winning Fargo, but then I went out to Worlds. I didn't do the best, but I was like, dang, you know like watching guys like Yanni win and I was with Gable and I just seen like yeah I'm, I'm on a team with these guys I'm rooming with Yanni at Cadet Worlds and I'm like I'm hanging around with the best like okay maybe I can do something with this and then I've trained out I went out there and trained with Yanni before so it's like just taking it all in because like out here is in Arizona it's not really it's not really no like I can't when was the last time someone went to college for wrestling and won you know sure um Talk about getting to Penn State and, and what that was. Was it similar to your expectations? You know, you said, I don't fit in. I don't think you met with the Penn State wrestlers, but maybe with, with yeah. the kind of people who are going to big colleges. Um, what Was there an adjustment period for you? Yeah, so I went like a couple of days after I graduated. And I got out there and it was, you know, it was different at first. I really didn't know what to expect. And uh, obviously you're moving across the country. Um, I don't have no friends yet. So it took a while to get into my groove. You know, I was cool with really cool with Gavin and Teske. We were in our own little groove. But um, but yeah, you know, it, it definitely took a while to adapt. But I mean, I wrestled my true freshman year, so it kind of just got rolling really quick. But you know, now I love it. You know, it's everything. But at first, I did, I was a little skeptical about it. But now it's you know you just get used to it and adapt to it. But now it's everything that I wanted and thought of college would be. Um. What was it, what was it that like you liked about it and that you've adapted to? You know, it's just the people you surround yourself with. I think it's just uh, a big thing. Is you you are who you surround yourself every day. So like, no matter what, you go into that restroom and you're just around just so much success. And like, how could you have a bad day being around all those people who just want to win? And not only win, every person in there is a good person. And I think that's what's uh, what's really changed my life is me just as a person off the mat, like wrestling is cool and all, but like, that's not everything. It's going to end one day. So I think for me, it's just the person who I'm becoming outside of wrestling is like, it's just, I just like, it's just, it's just like, I don't even know how to explain it, but I think that's the most important thing. It's just who I am offside, off, off the mat now came a long way since freshman year of high school. <laughs> <laughs> who are you off the mat? Right. I know who you are, but describe what you're talking about and these changes maybe that you've made even, even since that freshman year of high school. Yeah, I think it's just uh, putting others first, less self-absorbed. You know, I think uh, just look at everything with a different perspective. Um, not take definitely not taking wrestling too serious, and uh, just learn to have fun with a lot of things. 
Um, I think obviously Kale says stuff like this all the time, but like that's really how uh, that's really how I am now, and uh, never really taking my tough myself too serious either. Obviously, I put in the work, but you know it's just enjoying it, having fun, because like Kale said, it's, it all ends one day, right? Yeah. Um, talk us through last year, um, specifically the end of the season, right? You, you go to you go to Big Tens, they're over, we're getting ready for nationals, and then boom. Um, yeah. Pulling the plug. And and does any of this... Yes, yeah, so... Uh, go ahead. You go ahead. No, I was going to say, yeah. So, like, as soon as that happened, right, so the, the, they were talking about the virus. Um, as soon as they, one day or like, practice, they canceled it. And, like, that night, I was on the next flight home. And I just came home for a little bit. Mom, I mean, yeah, it sucked, right? Um, NCAAs got canceled. I mean, obviously, I hopped on Twitter and I was talking smack. But, like, uh, at the end of the day, it's like, that's not, that's not the most important thing, I guess, our health and stuff is, but, and we can only control, we can control, but obviously I was very, very upset, but what could we do about it? I, I, I honestly, just how to get in the groove for this upcoming year with a whole bunch of people. You know, you, you mentioned, you know, don't take wrestling too seriously and, and maybe don't let it control your life. It was part of that mentality that helped you accept what happened last year? No, 100%. Like, I'm convinced... There's wrestling fans out there on Twitter that I see every day who love wrestling more than me, and I'm the one doing it. It's kind of it's, it's crazy. I like on Twitter, like everyone just talking about wrestling every day. I'm like, wow, this is really what you guys want to talk about every single day of your life. I'm like, <laughs> couldn't be, it could not be me. Like they hop on Twitter and there's just like, wow. Um, what are you into outside of wrestling? I don't know. Whatever. I'm just I'm down to do whatever. Yeah. All right. So during 2020, I mean, during the the whole virus, everything shut down. You were one of the people, one of the college wrestlers, I think that that kind of took matters into your own hands more than more than a lot of people. Um, I mean, you you know, you jumped on the the Dick Chimizo card, and and you really made that happen. Um, you know, people that follow you on social media saw you were you were training any place you could. You were you were just really taking matters into your own hands. Um, what, talk about that. What, where did that mentality come from, and, and what were some of your th- some of the things that you did during the the pandemic shutdown that that maybe helped you make the most progress? You know, I was just training. I trained with a lot of people. I was training with Juan Archuleta, T.J. Dillashaw. We were we were grinding training lab. Um, I was just everywhere. But I think, uh, and then I just hopped on those cards. A lot of these cards. I was just like, I'm training. Why not see where I'm at? And um, and obviously, I want to compete because I mean, I don't want to. It's like doing a job but not getting paid, right? So I just wanted to compete, see where I'm at. So that's why I hopped on all these cars. But, yeah, I was just training with everyone. I mean, like I said, I don't care. I really don't. It's really not that deep. I'll train with whoever. I don't really care if someone beat me. It's, there's too many people out there who hate each other over little things. Some clubs or jobs of other clubs. It's, like, so petty. It's just, it's like, just wrestle at the end of the day. The better guy is going to win. And then you yeah, and and it seems like the training is only is only part of what you were focused on during the during the shutdown. I mean, you you really seem to explore a lot of the self promotional side of the sport, and um, yeah. you, it seems like you're really thinking a lot about the the business side of this. Where does that come from, and what have you learned during this last year about that? No, I mean, I mean, I talked to a lot of smart people, right? They uh, so like now I have a little social media guy and people who help me out and. Uh, Tell me what to do and how to post stuff. There's a lot that goes in. You got a lot of goes, a lot of goes uh, behind the scenes of that stuff. But so if you're going to the UFC, right? It's me and someone else. I have 100k followers. They have 50k followers. They're probably they could be better than me. But say I got 500 subscribers more than them on YouTube. UFC is probably gonna pick me, right? So that's the only reason why I uh, use social media because it's gonna go a long ways and it's only gonna it's only gonna keep getting bigger and want people like promotions want stuff that's gonna sell if that makes sense so like that's the only reason why i take i don't that's the only reason why i take it serious and i do a lot of cool stuff i got some cool stuff coming up that i'm shooting and uh yeah i'm gonna be shooting a lot these next next couple months um so i'm excited for that but i obviously in season kale's not big on it so i kind of i kind of pulled back on it but i think uh now i'm gonna go a little crazy especially now that i won i could uh I can use that to my advantage, so now I just got to milk it, right? Because like I said, you're only relevant in, in college wrestling. That's where you can grow your biggest fan base 
And then after after college, it kind of slimmers down to only the real ones who actually follow freestyle, but more people follow college wrestling. So now, for me, I feel like it's a time to really to really grow myself because college, college wrestling is when you have the most, uh, most what do you say, relevance. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of people don't figure that out as young as you figured it out. Who, who helped you see that this was a big opportunity for you, big window? I have a lot of people who help me. I know Dom Cruz helps me with that stuff, but I got a lot of people who help me because uh, I have a in, I have an entertaining style. So like that's the difference with me too. I can do a lot. Of, I can do a lot of crazy stuff in my matches. I don't even know how I do, but people like that stuff. So it's kind of brings. I can bring attention to myself through my wrestling. So then now I can use that to my advantage on social media. But um, but yeah, you know I got people who help me out and a lot of people that support me. So. I think I think I'm just lucky and blessed to be where I'm at. You, you said you kind of got to pull back in, during season because maybe Kale's well, not maybe right. Kale's just not as big into that stuff. Yeah. Are those conversations you have, and was it ever like not upsetting, but um, tense disagreements, or is it just like I get it, no problem. I wouldn't. Down. I wouldn't say disagreements. I totally understand. Right? Uh, at the end of the day, everything he tells me, he's gonna keep it real, right? Followers, yeah. money. All that stuff isn't going to win you wrestling matches, right? So why do you need that stuff? So I think just knowing that none of that stuff is going to win you matches. But know the balance, but use it right. And uh, this year I kind of just pulled off on it. And I think it definitely helped me. You know, I was focused. And then you can hop on Twitter and you can win a match and someone's still going to be like, say something. So like all that stuff just so negativity, like especially Twitter, all these wrestling fans, they got something to say, but none of them are the ones stepping the toe to the line. And that's one thing I really don't like about it. Um, it's kind of annoying, you know, people always have something to say about a match or, oh, wow, RBY didn't bonus, Nick Lee didn't bonus, but da 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 like, come on now, you know what I mean? It's just, people are just always have something to say and it's, it is kind of annoying at times, but then that's why you just stay off that stuff. When you stay off that stuff, you don't see it and then you're good to go. So I stayed off of it this uh this semester or this season yeah well the more successful you ha the more success you have the more successful you are the more you're gonna hear you know not necessarily hear it but yeah. more that noise is gonna filter right it's just they're they're gonna be louder yeah, people, and always, people hate the Yankees for no reason people hate the Patriots right people are people are people are, people are just negativity is just corny to me yeah. it's almost it's almost um a contradiction right because you're you're you're, you're vo voicing your displeasure for a, a way a lot of people act and handle on social media, yet you're praising the the big followings and the opportunities yeah. that that can get you, right? Oh, yeah. you got you. That's why you got to learn how to balance it all, right? So that's why I think a lot of people, too, why uh, for me, like why I have a little bit uh, – have a good amount of followers is I really don't care what people say or think, so I'm just going to post anything, if that makes sense. I feel like a lot of people kind of – care too much what people think or how they look so or they don't want they're kind of filtering themselves me i don't it's whatever i'm gonna post it if it looks cool i'm posting it i think a lot of people are kind of they don't know if they should but you just got to send it especially yeah. these upcoming high school kids y'all just got to get that following growing now especially with that like this and image coming in soon once you guys get to college it'll be over all right <clears throat> um let's talk about this season right really really weird season um I guess, what did you think, first of all, just had, just starting in January and like, boom, NCAAs felt like they were the next day? Yeah, you know, it's crazy. We didn't even, we didn't even get to compete. You know, we were sitting in our living room for two weeks, chilling, trying to find ways to work out and stuff because we, we were on pause. So that was kind of frustrating. But the same thing, just because that stuff happens, you just got to stay the course. And I feel like you can't really get too mad. You can only do what you can do. But And then we got back going. That was fun. But... You know, it was definitely an interesting season, getting tested every morning and stuff. That kind of that kind of wasn't too fun either. But you know, we found a way. We we stuck to it. And uh, yeah, it was definitely it was definitely like a different season, but it was fun just to compete and uh, with my boys. Sure. How did it feel getting to Big Tens and NCAs? Where I mean, you guys haven't wrestled a tournament since last year's Big Tens. And now all of a sudden it goes from from just you know a, a dual meter two on a weekend to a big tournament. Did it did it feel odd or was it just like riding a bike? It just felt like normal. Yeah, you know, it felt like normal. We rest, we had match day inside the room, and then it, a big ten was at Penn State, so I got to sleep in my own bed, wake up, drive my car there, wrestle, go back home. So it was, it was just felt like another match. You know, I didn't overthink it. 
just take one match at a time and I think that's just the way you gotta look at it. It just it's just it's just wrestling. Yeah. You I'm sure you've grown up dreaming or imagining make vision um Visualizing, gosh, tough word. Came to, uh, uh, visualizing the NCAs and wrestling there and wrestling on the stage with twenty thousand people in the arena. Did I mean? Obviously, you, you had to notice that there was not people there. Did it feel different than you thought it would yeah. being on that stage and with three to five thousand fans in, in the arena? No, I mean, at the end of the day, I decided to do what I did, but it was still an unreal moment with fans or no fans. But um. But I know everyone was watching back home. Like after I won, I had like a thousand text messages on my phone, and it was just so like I knew there was still either way there was still gonna be people watching. But uh, but yeah, it it was still it was still wrestling at the end of the day. Like I said, fans or no fans, you still got to go out there and perform. Dayton Fix, obviously a very very accomplished guy. Um, this match specifically, but in general, do you? Well, we'll go with this one in, in specifically. You like? Is there like a? Probably not like a, a detailed game plan, but is there like, uh, let's be aware Dayton's this, that, and the other, and that's kind of, this is the kind of match we want to wrestle? Um, yeah, you know, just pick your shots. Uh, watch the lefty. I think he does a little lefty uh, lefty single. Watch the shrug by, and um, that's pretty much what it is. But, uh, you know, I just, just found a way, honestly. I knew it was going to be a tough match, right? You know, Everyone knows Dane Fix is really game. Um, I've watched him since he competed, and, you know, he's always been a top dog. I've always known who, who he is. He's beaten everybody. So, uh, yeah, all up to him too, though. But I kind of knew what he does. He doesn't really do anything too crazy, but I know how tough he is, and uh, obviously I gave him respect out there. But I just found a way at the end. Was the, was the mat a big focus of your of your strategy? Did you know you could get that ride out? Honestly, I'm gonna be real with you. I've never ridden out someone good like that in my entire life. I really don't know how I did it, or I really people keep asking me what kind of ride do you do, or how do you ride like that. I was just, I was just, you know what I mean. I was just, I was out there wrestling. I really didn't, I didn't think I was gonna ride him out, but I just found a way. He kept yeah. doing that little, he does this little thing where he kind of like kind of flips over, and I knew that was coming because Gilman does that to me in practice. So I just followed it every time. I knew. And like I've been obviously I scouted him a couple of times and he hits that little I don't know what it is. It's like a little cartwheel, but I knew it was coming, so that's how I was able to follow him. He did it like twice. <clears throat> nice. Um you mentioned Gilman, right? Um um what's it been like since he's been, you know, in the Penn State room and how often do you get a chance to train with him? Um, honestly, we train I train with him almost every day. Um that's my guy. He's helped me a lot and he just changed my mind mentally. He's made me stronger, physically stronger, mentally stronger. Um, no matter what I do, he's always on me, yelling at me. Even if I go out there and have a dominant performance, he's always finding a way to uh, criticize me. And he's just always on me. And uh, I think we're a good team. You know, I help him out. I help him out. I help him out a lot. He helps me out a lot. But, like, I think he's really came in there and really changed me as a wrestler and a person. <clears throat> he's a, he's an interesting guy. Um, I like Thomas a lot. And he's he's – um, you know, he's a cerebral guy, right? He, he puts a lot of thought into a lot of things. And you said he's helped me mentally. I'm just, I guess, kind of curious about that side. Just straight toughness, you know? I didn't have no toughness. I didn't have no grit my freshman, my freshman year, I think, even last year. But now it's like I'm going to make – I'm going to make you work for every point kind of stuff. And, you know, just, you know how you guys know how Thomas Gilman is. I don't have to explain how he is, but yep. it's just toughness. And I think I like that. And I'm starting to figure it out now. I'm not, I mean, I'm not nowhere where I want to be or where I could be, but he, uh, he definitely got me, he definitely got me going. Did he help you prepare uh, mentally or physically for Dayton Fix? Every day for everybody. <laughs> it doesn't matter who they were. We're, I'm just straight. I imagine us wrestling every day. It's just straight. He's coming me. We're just going hard. It's fun. Though. I'm excited for him this weekend. Um, rooting for him. I hope he gets it done, but, uh, yeah, I got a lot of love for him. <clears throat> uh, obviously, you're not going to be competing at the Olympic trials. Is freestyle, uh, you know, something you want to need to pursue uh, in the coming years and, and after you graduate? Yeah, 100%. I think they said that I qualified for the World Team Trials in September, too. So I'm doing that, 61 kilograms, and that's just going to – not Olympic years, that's my weight. But outside of that, I can't – it's not that I can't make 125. I've never really tried. So I don't know 
I don't really know. I walk around like right now. I'm probably like 44, but I really don't know if I could uh, if I could make it and feel good. I never really tried that good. I haven't been that been that skinny since I couldn't even tell you. But because I'm already skinny, and then obviously 65 is just too big. So it's kind of I'm just stuck in the middle. Yeah, that's that's a shame. And then I guess you know beyond that, right? I know you said you're going to train some jujitsu here pretty soon, um, and yeah. you train with a lot of guys. Is is MMA of an avenue that you'd like to potentially pursue one day? Um, yeah, you know, I'm definitely going to get my hands in there. I mean, training with so many guys, I'm actually about to go train some uh, some jujitsu right now. And uh, that's the thing. I don't really – like outside of season, I just – I kind of cross-train everything. You know, I hit mitts a little bit. I uh, train with Dom Cruz. I train with Juan Archuleta, uh, Shane Burgos. I train with all these big names, and they're all telling me, bro, you can be something serious. So when you have that – when you have that going in your ear, every time you're training with the guys, it kind of gets you, uh, kind of makes you think about it. But as of right now, I'm chilling. But I definitely do cross train quite a bit. I do jiu. I'm gonna do jujitsu probably like every week from here on out. I just take a little break from wrestling, but but I'm still training. So like, I'm, it's still it's still good. <clears throat> with that cross training, jujitsu, hit and mitts, and wrestling goes in there. But do you like the stand up or ground game better aside from wrestling? Um, I'm getting better. I'm getting better on the, with my submission. So I definitely, I definitely like the ground game now, but on the feet, I feel like against these jujitsu guys, it's kind of like too easy. So I kind of just, I pull guard and I don't even know what I'm doing. So I just have fun out there. <laughs> I'm about to shoot a little vlog of me going out there right now. So it'd be pretty fun to post up. <laughs> oh, sweet, man. Um, cool. I know we're running down towards the end. So I just want to, I've got one little game we like to play with our guests and it's called wins and whoopings. So if you can think back over the, the span of your entire career from the first match you ever wrestled till your most recent one, is there one win and one loss that stand out, you know, as uh, memorable? Then it could be your best, but it could just be memorable for any reason. Um, on the win side, and then a whoop them where just like, man, I stepped out there, and this guy just beat the dog. He beat the snot out of me, and, and it stunk because everybody's, everybody's been beat um, up at some point. Um, I think right now I'm going to sit on the, the, the national title win because that's probably, that was probably like one of the best moments of my life. But, man, I think my f true freshman year, I don't know when it was, but John Ernest, he whooped me, bro. He put it on me. I lost ten zero. I've never gotten zeroed in my entire life. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what happened. I don't know where I went. I don't, I don't even know where the match is at. But I lost ten zero. I don't even know how I didn't get an escape. I couldn't even tell you. I don't know where that match is at. If someone could find that match, I would love to watch it because I know it would not be like that now. But I, I, I was like, wow, that would stick with me forever. Ten zero at NCA is my freshman year. That match is somewhere. <laughs> We'll see if we can't but dig it out, one, man. Was it the seventh place match? Is that or is that right? No, I don't even know where it was, but I, I know I lost ten zero. And then even <laughs> even me, uh, even wrestling the Santo, my the first match we've ever wrestled, you know, he put it on me, and I, I I see that clip sometimes, and he was just dumping me, and I look like a little girl. He had, I was like, wow, <laughs> that was unreal. All right, well, we'll see if we can't track that one down because that that. Uh... That's a very unique one. Um, and so it, yeah. we said we'd stop right at the hour because I know you got to go. We'll give you the last word, though. Any Anything for you, f for from you for us before we let you get on? No, just thanks for having me on. You know, it's, cool. it's cool out here and letting people hear a little bit more about my story. And, uh, yeah, I hope everyone has a good day and just everyone just keeps elevating their game. Awesome. Well, thanks so much, Rowan. I appreciate it. Have a great day training. You too. All See right. you, Rowan. Yeah. All right, man. Yeah, interesting, interesting story there with Roman in there. I'm sure there's more in there. For but, sure. Uh, I mean, man, like people. Unique I, guy. Th just the, the, it's so fascinating to me the, the number of times that he's just like all of a sudden seized onto an opportunity that, that most people would be like, ah, I better think about it. I don't know. I don't know. All Not in. Not him. He's all in. He in. Head first. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, well, that's going to do it. Um, that's They're going to do it for today's show. We got Gabe Dean coming on tomorrow. Just qualified for the Olympic trials at 86 kilos. Um, that's it. We'll see you then. Later.